Hello everyone, this is Adrian Bell, and in today's video, we will hear about the mysterious cases of Elisa Klaps, a 16-year-old Italian girl, and Heather Barnett, a 48-year-old British lady. Both of them lost their lives to one of the most repulsive predators ever seen. Elisa Klaps was a sweet teenager that lived in the city of Potenza, Italy. Elisa was a devout Catholic who had the ambition of becoming a physician. She was still in high school when she started receiving messages from a 21-year-old man who was very interested in her. His name? Danilo Restivo. Restivo was from a wealthy and influential family living in the same city as Elisa. According to gossip around town, Danilo Restivo had a strange fetish. He was seen cutting women's hair at the back of buses and in cinemas on many occasions. He also was older and had a very odd appearance and a creepy demeanor. Restivo kept messaging Elisa constantly to give him a chance, saying that Girls didn't like him because of his appearance and saying that he had gotten a gift for her, which naturally put Elisa in a very uncomfortable spot. She felt sorry for him and agreed to meet him at the local church on Sunday morning after the Mass. According to Elisa's best friend, she intended to tell Danilo Restivo that she wanted him to find someone else, as she was interested in another person. On September 12, 1993, Elisa went to the church of the Most Holy Trinity, taking a close female friend with her to meet her Estivo. At 11.30 a.m., Elisa told her friend Angelica to wait for her at the entrance of the church while she talked to Restivo. She said she would be back in about an hour. The problem is that her friend never saw her again. Elisa's friend told her family about the situation. They called Restivo's family, but his family said Restivo wasn't even in the city, as he was studying out of town due to schoolwork he needed to do at the university, and they had no knowledge of a club's whereabouts. When Elisa's brother went to the church, he discovered that the priest in charge, Domenico Sabia, had suddenly left for a few days, taking with him the only key giving access to the upper section of the church building. Elisa's family then called the police, and things got really strange. They treated the case as non-urgent, insinuating that Elisa maybe had run away with some boyfriend. When the police finally went to the church, the priest refused to let them investigate the church thoroughly, and for some reason, the police were okay with that. They also interrogated Restivo. He actually confessed to meeting Elisa, contradicting what his family had told Elisa's brother. He said that she left the church at 11.50 a.m. After having told him, there was another boy harassing her. Restivo also had a deep cut on his hand, which he explained to the police as an accident he had suffered walking to his university. Elisa's friend firmly denied his version, saying that Elisa never left the church and that Restivo was lying. Unfortunately, the police didn't believe Elisa's friend, saying that they suspected that she was involved in the disappearance. Restivo was known to the police, who believed he was responsible for nine incidents in which women had their hair cut against their will. A magistrate refused to issue an arrest warrant for Restivo in June 1994. Later, Restivo was taken into custody for false statements made to the public prosecutor, as his alibi in Elisa's disappearance couldn't be confirmed by anyone. He was supposed to spend 20 months in jail, but short sentences were being suspended in Italy at the time. For this reason, Restivo remained free. Elisa's close friend was also sentenced to 14 months for perjury, but later it was overturned. Elisa's brother, Gildo Cops, was still desperate and set up a site 
to search for his sister. Years later, he received an email from someone claiming to be Elisa, saying that she was doing well and had moved to Brazil, and for him to stop looking for her. Her brother traced the address of that email and found out that it was sent from a restaurant located in the center of Potenza, and that Danilo Restivo had left that very same place a little after the email was sent. Things got worse when a lot of people gave inaccurate information to the police about the case, creating several different conspiracy theories. One witness said that they saw Elisa in a white car with an Albanian guy. This same guy was also tried during the investigation, but ended up being dismissed due to the lack of evidence. Another person came forward and guaranteed that they saw Elisa in Albania, and one of her friends told the police that she actually spoke frequently with an Albanian guy. There were also a lot of theories about her journal, because one of the pages was torn out, and specialists said it probably had text that was handwritten in Albanian, based on indentations from the writing on other pages. But all of it ended up being nothing compared to what was yet to come. Unfortunately, over 17 years passed and there was no sign of Elisa, only theories everywhere, which just got in the way of the investigation instead of actually helping anything. In the city of Bournemouth, England, lived Heather Barnett, a 48-year-old seamstress and mother of two. She was a very sweet British lady that was highly respected by everyone as a hard-working woman that was dedicated to her children. But on the afternoon of November 12, 2002, Heather's 14-year-old son and 11-year-old daughter came back from school and noticed something wasn't right in their home. There were marks on the floor and their mom wasn't answering. That's when they found their mother's mutilated body laying on the bathroom floor in the back portion of the house. They immediately cried for help going outside the house and were assisted by the neighbor and his wife that lived right across the street. The scene described by forensics was horrific. Heather's life was taken due to violent hammer blows to her head. Her bra was cut between the cups and her breasts had been cut off and placed on the floor by her head. Her neck had been cut from ear to ear, and strands of hair were placed in her hands. In her right hand, someone else's hair. In her left hand, her own hair. Her pants had been opened and lowered, and her gloved hand placed inside her underwear, although there was no suggestion of a sexual assault. There were signs of struggle in the house, but no leads linked to the killer except for a small green towel they thought had been left by whoever it was that committed the horrific crime. When the police interrogated Heather's children, her kids told them that the only strange episode that happened was when their Italian neighbor, the same one who was comforting them after the crime, had previously visited their house asking their mother to make curtains for him. And right after that visit, her extra keys disappeared which led Heather to change all the locks of her house. That Italian neighbor next door was Danilo Restivo. Restivo had moved from Italy to England and married a disabled older Italian lady that he met online. This lady was, according to the police, mostly like a mother figure to him and treated the now 30-year-old Danilo Restivo like a little boy, preparing his meals, cleaning his clothes and looking after him. The crime scene was almost perfect, with no evidence of the killer besides that towel, which had a mix of DNA on it. As at the time, forensics hadn't advanced enough to separate blended DNA samples in the evidence. For this reason, the investigation of this crime took over nine years. When forensics were finally able to match Restivo's DNA with the DNA on the green towel, Restivo said that he took the towel to Heather so she could match the color of the towel 
with the curtains he wanted her to make for him. When they investigated their estivo, they found a pair of tennis shoes soaking in bleach in his house, which made them wonder if they could have been used to commit the crime. The police were able to retrieve blood from them, but unable to determine who the blood belonged to because of the bleach. The British police weren't completely convinced by the Steve's alibi, as they knew it was a manually modified timesheet at the computer center he supposedly was at during the time the crime was being committed, and a bus ticket for that time as well. But the police knew that he could easily have left the bus right after taking it. Danilo Restivo was also bumbling to the investigators, pretending he didn't understand English properly. The police then told the translator to translate their part incorrectly to him, in order to observe his reactions. It didn't help Restivo at all, as it was clear to the investigators that he detected the misinterpretations, so he was obviously pretending not to understand English. The police also followed him for a while, but on another day 12, just like the day of the murder of Heather Barnett and the day of the disappearance of Eliza Klops, the police followed Restivo and noticed that he was sneaking around the park and stalking single women, even ducking in the grass while following them. The police got worried when he changed his clothes in the park into another set of clothes with exactly the same look and kept stalking the women. For you to have an idea of how disturbing that scene was, it was a very hot summer day and Estevo was using a winter jacket and gloves. The police decided at that point to call responders to stop him and search his car. In it, they found two pairs of scissors, a ski mask, gloves and a flaying knife, the exact type of knife that was used to kill a South Korean girl on July 12th of that same year in the same area under very suspicious circumstances. Even though he was basically carrying a murder kit with him, unfortunately, there was still not enough evidence to arrest him. When questioned by the police about his stalking behavior around women, he said he was hunting insects. But there was not a single insect in his belongings. Meanwhile, in Italy, 17 years after the mysterious disappearance of Elisa Klaps, on March 17, 2010, some workers who were carrying out work in the church where Elisa vanished years before, discovered in a tiny cramped attic beside the bell tower, a mummified, skeletonized body covered by a few tiles. Under the body, in the area that would have been her hips, were faded dark stains on the floor, later found to be her blood. The skull was separated from her body. Her pants were down, in her hands there were two chunks of her own hair, and also a small 13 millimeter button was found under her pelvic bones. Elisa's pants and underwear had been partially lowered and her bra unhooked at the back and broken at the front between the cups. Identify the bruising around the pubic region, the thigh and the breast areas were also indicative of a sexual assault. Later, specialists said some light brown hair had been found near her body, and this had been perfectly squarely cut. Her belongings like her watch, clothes and her perfectly folded glasses were still at the crime scene. As the family of Elisa were pressuring the police, they tested the body's DNA, but at first they said it wasn't Elisa. But after a second test, it was confirmed that it was Elisa's body. Elisa's brother said that his rage was so profound, he couldn't hold himself without screaming at the top of his lungs. Because all these years, he knew the church had something to do with his sister's disappearance, and that Danilo Restivo was the killer. The priest of the church, when Elisa disappeared, Domenico Sabia, never let the police look thoroughly through the church. Also, he firmly denied having ever known Danilo Restivo. 
but people found pictures of the priest Domenico Sabia holding Restivo very close on his 18th birthday. Also, there were pictures of him with a button missing from his priest garments. Remember, that same type of button was found under Elisa's body. Even though it was said that the button wasn't the same, there were strong suspicions about it. Remember, they said at first that the body wasn't Elisa's body. The priest Domenico Sabia died in 2008, probably taking the secret of Elisa's death with him. The only one with any knowledge of the priest's involvement in the crime is Danilo Restivo. We have to wonder why the priest never let the police or anyone investigate the church after Elisa's disappearance. At this point, Elisa's best friend, who was once considered a liar and even tried in court as a perjurer, now was proven to be telling the truth after all these years. Being made aware of the new evidence found in Italy, the British police paid a visit to Potenza in order to investigate the similarities between Elisa's and Heather's murders more deeply. Disturbingly, not only was it very clear that Danilo Restivo was Elisa's killer, as his DNA was found on her clothes. For the British forensic profilers, it was obvious that with Elisa, Danilo hid her body and ran away, but with Heather, Many years later, he wanted to display his brutal murder to the world. First, to her children, who he knew for a fact would be the first ones to find her. Then, he calmly watched them from the next door and even offered to help. The British police also tested the DNA of many women who accused Danilo Restivo of cutting their hair, trying to find a match to the chunk of hair found in Heather's right hand, which was unsuccessful. Danilo was arrested for Heather's murder and sentenced to life in prison in England. He was also tried and condemned in absentia in Italy as well. One of the most talked about and important aspects of Elisa's case is the fact that Domenico Sabia, the priest of the Most Holy Trinity Church in Potenza, refused to cooperate with the investigators and actually left for vacation immediately after Elisa's disappearance. He then refused to let anyone, including the police, look thoroughly inside the church and denied having ever met Danilo Restivo. Add to that the fact that he refused to ring the church bells for Elisa while other churches rang them during the times where her family were looking for her. Why would the priest deny knowing Restivo when there was proof that they were close friends? Also, why not allow the church to be investigated? Isn't that incredibly suspicious? Maybe if the priest simply let the police investigate inside his church in 1993 after Elisa's disappearance, the kind and hard-working Heather Barnett would still be alive, watching over her children. Maybe other women that Restivo is the main suspect of a killing would still be alive as well, and Elisa's family would have gotten justice immediately, instead of suffering years of despair and anguish. It could have provided a final peace to Elisa, and the honor she deserved. But instead, Elisa was silenced and her body was left to gather dust in the very place she trusted and thought would be a safe sanctuary for her. Elisa Klaps had a huge funeral ceremony, followed by the shock and anger of people against the church and the authorities for the corruption and silence involved in this case over all these years. And they firmly believed it happened due to the power and influence Danilo Restivo's family had in the region. People were misled for almost two decades to think Elisa was possibly abroad, perhaps even being abused by criminals, when the whole time she was right there in the church waiting for justice. Her brother, Gildo Claps, 
said that her funeral would be in an open place because Elisa would never go back inside the church. Danilo Restivo was not only known for child abuse, but the main suspect for the mysterious murders of other women. We will talk about them in my next video. Stay tuned. If you like this video, please leave your thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.